everyone, Kaori over here, and today I've got a very special, special guest, my good friend, John Quick. How are you guys doing? <laughs> and so, in light of Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3, and I wanted to review and recap it, but I did Sailor Moon Crystal 1 and 2 for another nameless after, after show network that I'm no longer there with happily. And so, I needed to recruit one of my friends to watch Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3 so I can recap it with me. However... And I got recruited. He got recruited. <laughs> and John Quick happened to have never seen an episode of Sailor Moon Crystal, so he had to really jump through. And like, yeah, and I had also, <laughs> like, I had only seen like maybe a few episodes of Sailor Moon, like back as a kid on the old Toonami block. Yeah. Like, it, randomly. I don't really think it was your demographic. It was I was... Yeah, I don't think as a 13-year-old boy, Sailor Moon was, like, aimed in any way, shape, or form at me. I really... I, I would... I guess I could be surprised, but... And I thought, like, that he, since he does love all different kinds of anime, this might be... He might be this perfect candidate for Sailor Moon Crystal. So I am going to heavily recap Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3, but we're also gonna pick his brain to see what he thought of the whole entire season itself. Uh, spoiler alert guys, this is filled with a lot of spoilers for Sailor Moon Crystal. We're not gonna hold back, so if you haven't seen Sailor Moon Crystal, you should press pause, watch all of it, and then unpause this <laughs> I will get. I will give you five seconds before I just start yelling all the things. <laughs> all the things. And in five. We're gonna do positives and negatives. <laughs> Four. But let's start with the three. positives. <laughs> okay. Positives. Yes. I thought that in comparison to the other seasons, I thought that this season was really, really good in terms of, like, character. They put a lot more into the characters this time. Like, they're, like, in the sense that they had them, they, they felt more fleshed out. Like, my favorite, like, one of my moments that I knew that was, like, that that, was, that they were doing a little, something a little bit different was, like, when they had Monaco, or Sailor Venus, sneak away so that she could go, like, while, while they were supposed to be watching Michiru uh -huh. um, do her performance. She was just like, no, there's a pop idol playing over there. Screw this. I'm gonna go see that. Yeah, it was kind of weird to see uh, Sailor Venus be a, a little less, what's the word? S serious? Cause yeah. Because she's, like, she's like the serious soldier girl. Like, that's kind of her deal. Well, she had, she basically had no choice, though. She was yeah. all alone for a long, long time before all of them recaptured their memories. Um, but what other pauses did you have? Well, sure a lot. You can even go through yeah. all the seasons since you haven't... Well, you know. it's all the seasons, but like, um... Well, that was my, like my big one. It was just like how much more character work w was done in it. Um, I thought that the the animation had been, of course, like it's of course been steadily getting better. I think just they, they just get more and more money, so like they just keep upping everything. And uh, that's a question actually I have for you because a lot of people complained about season one and two, and the animation was so different than the classic Sailor Moon. Um, the, but the classic Sailor Moon, they did. They were working on a shoestring. Shoestring budget at one, at like a lot of the times. Like, there's a reason why the transformation sequences were like in almost every single episode mm -hmm. in their full entirety is because they only had so much money for each episode, so they had to just be like, just play play the transformation sequence again, just <laughs> th fill space. Yeah. So I mean, season one and two of uh, Crystal, people have been saying that season three was exponentially better. Did you notice that? Like, such a huge improvement, or...? It wasn't, like... Like, like, starkly, at least I didn't notice it, I but I don't either. necessarily notice those things a lot of the times. But I did notice how it was an improvement. Is that my phone or your that phone? That was my phone, and um, I will silence that. No, it's, it's all good. <laughs> Never mind, then. I will not silence that nonsense. Okay. So, um... There was that. I thought that um, Chibi Moon was... A lot less annoying this time around. I I tried to like Chibi, yeah. Usa, Chibi Usagi, but I, ne I I never really could. Like at least uh, in season no. two, she's she's not my thing either. I I'm not a fan of Chibi Usa. I, I I she's kind of ratty and she gets away with a lot of things. There are moments when she becomes intelligent and because she's technically she's over nine hundred years old. Yeah. <laughs> She's older than Usagi, kind of, in a strange, twisted way, but they're taking care of her. I, I, yeah, I know. Well, she's, I mean, she, she's super sheltered, but you think after 900 years, like, mate, but who knows? Who knows how 
the neo silver millennium like rolls with things like maybe maybe people don't become adults until they reach you know twelve thousand I don't know. Um, well, some of my positives about this season was that it was really dark, and I liked the change from it. It was a lot. It did get a lot darker at a lot, a lot of the points, yeah. And then, of course, obviously, we have to mention, well, at least for me, the appearances of Sailor Neptune and Uranus and a lot more of Pluto and Saturn, like, all the new, sa like, the, the outer Sailor Senshis came out. I mean, that's something that a lot of Sailor Moon fans are excited to see. It's like, do you, as a new viewer or a new Sailor Moon fan, maybe, um, do you prefer the outer senshi or the inner senshi? Like, what do you think? Well, I do like the outer senshi, like, definitely, well, just because, like, they're a bit more hardcore, I guess is the, the, the way yeah. to describe them. Uh -huh. Um, like, but, um, Saturn I was trying to, like, figure out necessarily, like, what she's all about, because it seems like Saturn just shows up to wreck all of the shit. Like, that's what she's about. She's like Reaper. Yeah, like, she just shows up to, like, end everything. It's like, she's like, she comes out with this, the Grand Celestial Reset button. Yeah. And, like, that's basically... Pretty much. That's basically all she does, which kind of, so, like, you really think about it, that's kind of a crappy job. It's like, you're, it's your job, like, you don't, you don't get to do anything until everything goes to hell. Well, that's why she was so sad about this whole entire season. She kind of was destined to be that poop. Well, yeah. Party pooper. Well, she also had a bunch of other, like, horrifying yeah. David Cronenbergian crap going on with her. Yeah, for sure. Like, like, Poho Taru-chan, like, her, her arms and legs were, like, all cybernetic, and she's constantly getting massive pains because an alien parasite is about to burst for forth from her all, you know, all alien, so it's, like, not, no good times happening in your world. No. She's a, she's a tragic hero, as they would say. Um, I also just like that the fact that the the bad the big bad was actually a big bad. Because a lot of times in Sailor Moon, you get the feeling that the bad guy is kind of easily disposable. And you're like, oh, well, that was easy. That that was kind of anticlimactic. But it wasn't like that for this last season. It, it, it wasn't. <laughs> but, like, the thing that I actually liked about the first two seasons of Sailor Moon Crystal was how just classic unapologetically anime it was like it was old like they, they like they, there was no like meta update there was not there, there's nothing it was all played so straight like yeah, yeah. this is like this is what anime like i don't know if you guys know this watch like old anime like you know I, i'm i'm gonna be talking a lot of shonen right now but like dbz or dra or just you know straight up Dragon Ball, or even like the like the original Voltron, or some of some of those other like some of those like 1980s, early 90s um, anime. But it always is just like the big bad shows up, but the hero has the power, and the power just like straight beam shoots the big bad, and the big bad mm -hmm. is like just dead. So. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's what that's what the show like it seemed like it was trying to be and being all about and in season three they it looked like they were trying to change that a little bit. Yes, I think I well I think it just with the additions of the and the introductions of the other senshis they had to make it darker because those ones are hardcore. They almost seem that they have more experience and more strength and more knowledge than the other sailors, which technically they do because they're. Well, it's and like I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing because like the other sailor scouts. Seem like they had like just been reincarnated, but it seems like the outer ones almost never really died. Like they'd always been, they'd just been around and hadn't just been active until like now. Yeah, it's, it seems like that too. Yeah. Oh, especially well, Pluto. Pluto definitely, but it's hard to tell because Pluto is like all time lordy. Yeah. Like she's just straight up. Which is weird because in, in the first, uh, I think in the second season, you find out in that particular arc that she is destined to stay at that door. And should she stay at that door, it means that she's giving up her life or she's basically committing suicide in some strange form. But then in this one, she gets to kind of walk around as a senshi and fight. So 
It's, it's, it's like how that happens. It's kind of cool. I'm not going to complain. Tiny, wimey, wibbly, wobbly you know? stuff. I mean, because technically she could, not only is she there, but she's also still at the door because the door seems to be outside time. Yeah, I, I guess. So, yeah. let's not, let's not go, let's not think about it because we will be drawing, that. we'll be drawing diagrams and with straws and all sorts of other time travel quotes that I can pull out my ass. I, I mean, there's definitely a lot of holes to the Sailor Moon arcs, but that comes with every single anime because we don't watch it fully for the story. Right. We watch it for a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, so let's think. Uh, what are some of the things that didn't work for you in the past this past season? Well, other other, other than Chibi Usa, yeah, like that than... was, yeah. Chibi Usa, I think you either love her or you hate her, and unfortunately, I I've never really been a fan of her other than her color. I love pink so much, <laughs> but I find that the relationship with her and Usagi is just so bizarre and she has really bad daddy issues oh god the daddy <laughs> issues are the thing that actually make me not like her it, it especially at the end of season two i was just like this is getting way too weird yeah um <laughs> but yeah like her daddy issues are extreme and then she doesn't treat usagi like her mom like ever she, she treats she, her more like she's underneath her beneath her yeah or yeah, I, not even like a sister, but like a, like as a romantic rival for yes. what's uh, her, her her father. Not even essentially, no. What is her dad? Just a dad who hasn't knocked her mom up yet. Yeah, that's I. So I, I don't know. You guys tell us if you're a fan of Chibi Usa. I, I know there's a lot of fans of her out there. I can I can not. understand like I mean it's 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 moe stuff, and I'm not a fan of moe stuff. I wasn't. I mean, I oh, I forgot to mention how much I loved that Sailor Moon became Super Sailor Moon, and it was amazing, and I loved her outfit in it. But I wasn't very happy. Well, I knew this was coming because obviously, I I'm a fan of from previous times um, that Chibusa becomes also Super Sailor Chibusa. But yeah. it's like, man, she's she's training to be a sailor senshi, and then that we've got all these other sailor scouts have been been there for a while and they don't get super size just yet they will but you know just like it just frustrates me no, 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 like no, none of them get the the super saiyan upgrade you know it's like oh, hello they need him and she's just this one in training i get she has a grand heart and i don't know she's the daughter of well she's the, the queen serenity yeah yeah i get it but like, I'm, like she can it's just kind of like one of those things like maybe they shouldn't have pulled the trigger on that one so early but her strong desire to do this made this her become super. It's like, oh shit! If I had strong desire, maybe it would be cool. I guess that's and, a life lesson. And a ma and a magic chalice. Yeah. And a heart moon rod. Yeah. yeah. Well, what did you think of all those things? Was that cheesy for you? For me, it, it, it's cheesy but cute. It, it works for me. No, it's. It goes with. I it. grew. I well, I grew. I like. I grew up like that. Grew up with that. Like I watched He Man, Masters of the Universe, and Transformers, and shows like that, where it's like they it, like they introduce here's a new thing and like which. It used to be transparently, here's a new toy, go buy the toy. Yeah, yeah. But, like, so, I, like, it, it didn't bother me that they did that. Because, that again, like, the, the show introduced itself as we're doing, we're kicking in old school, so this is how you do it in the old school. Are you, are you planning on watching uh, Sailor Moon Season 4? Should it come out? Actually, yeah. No, I am. Like, I, I really, really liked Season 3. I think I, like, I enjoyed them, like, as a viewer. Like, Seasons 1 and 2... I enjoyed them as like an anime fan and somebody that like makes content because I liked looking at it and picking apart like what are the tropes, like what am I seeing and like, you know, identifying and analyzing story, like in a really nerdy way I yeah, liked it. Sure. But like, like, but as, as a straight up viewer, I like, I wasn't really enthralled but season three I was, so I'm interested to see what they do now in season four. Nice. And like, well, of course, like now they, what they introduce because like, I knew about Sailor Uranus and or Uranus or Uranus and Sailor. Why is that something you're to say? I don't Uranus. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, and Sailor Neptune. Like I knew about them, and so I knew that they were going to come in at some point. Um, so, but now I'm like I'm totally in the dark. So I'm just so I have like no clue. It's like ooh, yeah, who are they going to introduce now? What are they going? What what now are they going to do? Um, Although, I, one of the things like, that kind of confused me, like, when Haruka was 
like outed as one of the sailor as like a sailor scout like mm. officially outed she switched from wearing like androgynous or male clothes to straight up wearing feminine clothes did she yeah she did like if you look at it like after that point she starts wearing like i mean they're like power suits but she's like she's got like you know blouses and like women's blazers and mini skirts oh well i i didn't even notice that for me she just comes off as simply an androgynous but that's an interesting point that you pointed well, out. Yeah, because well, they well they talk about it that how like that um, Sailor Ernest or Har Sailor Uranus is both male and female. So I'm like, was she reincarnated as a male? Well, they or, also like, they kind of say she's neither male or okay. female. Okay. So uh, leave it up to interpretation. I mean, and, yeah, and I know that in the Sailor Moon classic version, they didn't want to bring those two sailors out because that and it was so taboo but that kind of stuff is very common in japan um even in daily life you see a lot of tokyo human beings walking around and you're not quite sure what they are and it's all good <laughs> but um yeah so do you have anything else while we wrap up this video um i mean you I, you just yeah. plow through three seasons so you deserve the mic well i'm I'm gonna have to say, like, one of the things that I really, re that, like, it, it took me a second to realize, but I really, but then, like, I, I got, when I got it, I was just, I felt really proud of myself, is when I realized that the, uh, the Outer Guardians, their talismans were the three sacred objects of the Japanese royal family. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's yeah, right. like, yeah, the jewel, the jewel, the sword, the mirror, yeah. yeah. Huh? Oh, see, I didn't yeah. notice things like that. That's, that's geek, the geek in you. Yeah, that is the total well, nerd in me. The Japanese I geek in you, right? But I was trying to figure out, like, why Master Pharaoh 90? Like, why was he named that? What was the, like, very <laughs> specifically, Master Pharaoh 90, but then, like, all of the, the witches, like, they have a distinct, more like a distinctly, like, as opposed to having an Egyptian theme to any of their, like, powers, abilities, or their looks, it's, like, a lot more, like, Western witch, sure. I'd say. Sure. So I was just like, what's the tie-in with Pharaoh? Why, like... Maybe they just like Egyptians, and they just wanted to give a little allude to an Egyptian or something there. But not, like, I, I, I guess, like, why the, not, like, why the 90... I, that could be a reference to the Tau star system, which is a real star system. Well, if, if anyone knows who's yeah, watching, like, all two of you, then uh, tell us. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, no, please, please tell us. Like, I guess it could have, because it could have been, because I, I guess, like, all of the names of those... Because the names of, like, all of the bad guys relate to something. Like, in the first season, like, all of the... All of Queen Beryl's, like, um, Dark Kingdom Knights mm -hmm. are all named after, like, Jadeites, mm -hmm. OSI. Yeah. Like, they're, they're named after, like, precious stones yes. because they used to be the, the Knights of the Earth that helped uh -huh. King Endymion. And then in season I two, love that story, by the way. It's a shame that you can see more of the Knights. In the comics um, or the manga, you see a little bit more of them. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. And so, so like, I, I remember in season two, like, those guys were all related in, in like, in some way. Like all their all their names, the the Dark Moons, mm -hmm. were. And like, I, I honestly, I was actually kind of like excited to see because I thought for a second that they would go the direction of because. A lot of it was like Chibi Uso was trying to find her place. Yeah. And then I thought that there's like, ooh, the dark moon, that's kind of interesting. So there's like, there's the dark side of the moon and then like the side of the moon that always faces the sun. So like, that'd be interesting if like Chibi Uso, like her place is like, because her mom's going to live forever and she'll never really inherit like the Silver Millennium. Like if she becomes like, she becomes the guardian of the dark moon and like that's supposed to be like her job and her place. I mean, they didn't go that direction, but I thought it would have been cool if they had. Yeah, well, it's still cool, right? Yeah, it's still, still cool. cool. Still cool. Good. Still cool. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought, yeah, it's, it's a fun <laughs> idea. All right, well, look, guys, you tell me and John as well what you thought by commenting below. And don't forget to press that thumbs up button and click subscribe and tell a friend a day about this little channel that I'm trying to grow. And in the meantime, you can also continue the conversation by not only commenting down below, but also following us. John, would people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter um, at, at nowquick. But he doesn't really use it, so just keep tweeting at him, and then he'll be like, Damn "Eventually, it, I, I mean, I mean, I'll get back to it. <laughs> I just haven't in a while." And uh, you can follow me also at k a o r i o u s on all different things. That's my tag, 
and thanks for tuning in and Wakame says thanks a lot and uh, catch our next video we will be reviewing another thing probably Voltron? <laughs> yeah Voltron, Voltron. Legend Le Voltron Legendary Defender yeah not the old school one but that would be cool too yeah. anyway catch you guys later bye